Okay, Ion MPI. It's brought to you by DigiKey. This week's new product from Analog Devices, Lady Ada, is... This week, it's the Max 98365, which, um, as you can imagine, was born initially at Maxim. Uh, Analog Devices uh, purchased Maxim, so now it's an an AD device. um, But, uh, you know, Maxim is near and dear to my heart. So I think they get a little bit of credit. Uh, for the original um, engineering and design work. So this is a um, I2S slash TDM slash left justified um, mono class D amplifier chip. Uh, it's what it looks like, uh, you know, in the rendering, it's a uh, BGA um, 12 pin chip, which I'll talk about in a moment. And it is a dun, dun, dun. Uh, teeny cost effective 14 volt plug and play digital class D amplifier um, it's got a lot of specs but the things I thought were most interesting is one you can power it from 3 to 14 volts uh, so you can run it from you know uh, lipo batteries double A's up to 12 volt batteries um, it does very good at powering both 4 ohm and 8 ohm and 16 ohm loads uh, up to 14 watts um, I think sorry 18 watts on the um, a high end of 12, 14 volts. Uh, if you want low t- THD, of course, you'll go down a little bit more, but um, you know, easily 10 to, to 18 watts into four ohms. It's class D, so it's very efficient. The efficiency is very good into eight ohms. Um, it's very tiny, uh, it's very powerful. It's five volt logic compatible, and you can use it with a variety of different uh, digital audio interfaces. Um, so this is kind of like the typical application. Um, it's got this kind of funky thing going on there where there is, you know, normally you'd have, you know, uh, clock, frame clock, and data out. That's like your standard I2S or TDM um, multiplexed data. And by connecting to the three data pins, there's like DAI, DA, sorry, DA0, uh, DA, DIA0, DIA1, DIA2. And by changing the um, connection, it will auto detect whether it should be like in left or right mode, which I think is kind of neat. Uh, it also means, of course, it can kind of auto detect the bit rate. Um, and as we will mention in a moment, we don't need a master clock. But really, it's there's not a lot of things going on here. This is a very simple design, um, and it's it's tiny and you know does the job. It, it actually reminded me a lot of the uh, Max 98357, which is a similar part number. And this is one of my favorite I2S amps. It just works, um, you know, like the. Uh, Max 98365, it's a single class D audio amp. Um, you know, you just have a couple passes on the output, but it does a great job with um, I2S in, and I, you know, use this with Raspberry Pis and, and microcontrollers just fine. So the only thing about that amp, this one, is it only goes up to five volt uh, power, um, and only does, I think, like three uh, watts or so, whereas, like I said, this new amp can do up to, you know, 18 watts. Only thing is, uh, this is a cool, this is not the chip itself, it's a different chip, but this is an SEM photo of a WLP. It's a WLP. Uh, so it's 12 pins, um, 4 by 3 and it is 0.4 millimeter pitch BGA, which is, you know, a bit tough. Um, but that said, the inner pins, you can usually keep disconnected. You can use the outer pin, so at least you don't have to um, do, you know, blind vias or plug vias. Um, you can pretty much, I will show in a little bit, you can kind of get away with just cutting to the outer pins to do most of the things you want. And a lot of PCB houses these days can give you a pretty good um, clearance on your 0.4 millimeter BGA pitch devices. So, you know, I'm less scared as I used to be of 0.4 millimeter uh, pitch BGA. The uh, fact of the matter is a lot of the more advanced chips are coming in these chip scale packages. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this has got great power output. Um, at 12 or 14 volts, uh, you can get into 4 ohm or 8 ohm, you know, up to 18, 18 watts, 15, 18 watts, um, you know, with very low total harmonic distortion. So it sounds, it sounds really good. Um, there is a gain selection pin um, because, like as you imagine, you know, it doesn't have I squared C uh, for control. Like some nice I2S amplifiers use I squared C for volume control. Uh, this one does not. So instead, you use there's a pin which you can connect or disconnect um, if you want to change the gain. TDM, I think that the gain isn't uh, adjustable, only in I2S 
slash left justified. Um, again, this is one of the inner pins. So, you know, you might want to just leave it unconnected. So the gain is 18.5 volts and then just adjust your um, input signal to make sure it doesn't overwhelm the speaker. Um, and this is the package. It's super tiny. Um, so you can see the pitch and I think it's like, it's like one and a half by 1.75 millimeters. So it's like tiny, it's a tiny chip. Um, this is some of the examples of wiring. So uh, you can see um, the gain slot is like the middle right pin. So you can either connect it to ground input or leave it floating without having to route through the GPIO um, pads. So it basically means like, look, you know, if there's, there's two gain options that would use a resistor, that one's a little tough. But if you don't mind just bridging the BGA, um, you can get three different, you know, hard select gains. You know, it's not like a, a thing that totally kills me. Um, it would have been really cool if it was only outer pins, it would been easier to route. Um, but I think uh, the fact of the matter is everyone wants, you know, AirPod sized amplifiers these days it has to be ultra tiny. Uh, so the interesting thing is this uh, digital audio interface configuration. So basically by switching around the pin connections, you know, it does auto detect um, some settings, but whether it's like the left channel, the right channel, or um, stereo mix, depends on how you connect the data clock, uh, the left, right clock, and um, the data itself, the data pin, the three uh, pins for I2S, which way you configure them tells you which channel it's on, um, and whether like it, you know, does left justified or, or I2S. So um, there's a big description of it and there's a couple of example wiring diagrams. Um, so for example, here you can see, um, you know, here's how you uh, can wire it up and it's like one of them would be your left channel and one of them would be your right channel. Um, I'm trying to think which one, it's like one of the pins is connected slightly differently. Uh, I think so, and it's connected the same Oh, it's like DA1 and DA2 are swapped, and that's how it knows whether it's a left or right channel. So the the previous break I talked about the, the Max 85, 375 or whatever, there's a pin you have to short to tell it whether it's left or right. In this case, you just change the w pin wiring order. So just keep an eye on that. One thing I do like about this is like the Max 98, 357, um, again, one of my favorite I2S amps, is there's no M clock. Uh, that means you only need three GPIO to connect it to your I2S connect, uh, connection onto your microcontroller. And most importantly, on single board Linux computers like the Raspberry Pi that does not expose the M clock pin, this will work. Um, you know, you can always generate an M clock with a separate oscillator, but why pay 50 cents and take up more board space when uh, it'll auto generate the M clock signal on its own, very handy. Um, part of the auto detection of like what mode it's in, I2S or TDM, is that um, it doesn't, it, it will, for example, it'll auto-generate that M clock from the bit clock, but not all bit clocks are valid. Now, all that, I looked at them and all of them look, seemed reasonable, eight kilohertz, 44.1, 88.2, et cetera, 192 kilohertz. Um, just keep that in mind, like not, you can't like use 12 kilohertz. I don't think it likes that. So it's, it's expecting kind of standard I2S connectivity or, or TDM connectivity. Um, and finally, uh, just as a note, I, you know, I, I think there's only one version in stock right now, but there are four versions, A, B, C, D, and they basically depends on how long it takes to turn on and um, when data is valid. So it's like there's a little bit of a, like, does it ramp up the volume or does it just turn on? Does it take time? You know, 13 milliseconds, one millisecond. So look at this table again. I, I think only one of them is available right now. Um, but if you need a custom one, contact uh, ADI and they will hook you up. Available on DigiKey. It's and, in stock. And we mean that. 915 at the time of this printing. Yes. <laughs> By printing, I mean screenshotting. For reals. Yeah, so you can get them. You actually can get them. And I can, I just can show quickly the yeah. eval out. board. I did pick one up. Because uh, I wanted, actually it was also like, maybe I'll make a breakout out of this board. Um, so that's the amplifier. So it's quite tiny. Um, and this is a, you know, very nice teal, it says maximum integrated, but you know, again, it's, uh, it's ADI now. Um, but that's the chip, but you can see, you know, the total size of the amplifier. I mean, these are all the headers and connectors, but the, um, the amplifier itself is, you know, maybe three millimeters by three millimeters, including all the passives you need. 
Okay. And that is this week's INPI. Hi, INPI.